Hello, welcome to episode 55 of the Andy Takes That Chance podcast. Last Saturday night, about seven o'clock, we all received the news. That was a tragedy uh, that had happened involving our ex-player Jordan Sinnott. A young age, 25, he lost his life in a tragic incident in Redford in Nottingham. So Jordan played a couple of times for us. It's a 2013-14 season, I think it was. So his dad lifted the playoff trophy uh, at Wembley under Neil Warnock's team. Really sad uh, time, Si, uh, for football, really. <laughs> it's, uh, you see so much vitriol, don't you, with football and, you know, the fans we've seen, you know, bits this week, Manchester City, Man United fans having a go at each other and, and et cetera, some of the racist stuff. But in tragedy, we've seen kind of football come together, haven't we, with the, uh, the shirts that have been donated by, you know, far and wide, really, but, it's, it's incredible, really, isn't it, to think someone could be, you know, on a night out and just lose a life like that. And it was a sad day. And it was, I was really proud, like, of Hull City, to be honest with you, on Tuesday night when we went there and the magnificent tribute that they did uh, because they put his you know, face on the screen. I think everybody obviously, you know, got the, the seriousness of it. And it was, it was just a chilling wind across the pitch. And I thought it was quite somber. I think so a few, uh, Tweets from John Stead. I think John Stead and a few other people who kind of knew him and played around that time, they were there as well. But shocking, mate, isn't it? Yeah, really kind of tragic and sad news kind of coming out of, obviously, lots of social media channels on, on Saturday afternoon and early evening. Um, certainly can echo everything you've said there, Cosy, around kind of puts a lot of things kind of gone in, in our individual lives and, and that in perspective. But what has been really nice to see, obviously, this week is a the football community as a whole kind of come together um, in su- kind of support of the family, the friends, and I guess the love of football, really. Um, obviously, the, the shirts campaign that those of you on social media will have seen is kind of um, really kind of, kind of, kind of really out there, isn't it? And lots of kind of clubs, professional clubs from the Premier League all the way down to kind of part-time players on a Sunday have, have embraced that. And um, in my eyes, at least, no one shirt is more important than another. And it's a real kind of nice sentiment what's happened there. Um, and out of some kind of tragedy will hopefully come some positivity with some kind of funds being raised for sport relief and that sort of yeah. thing. But yeah, it just kind of puts puts everything in perspective when something like that happens. And the positives as well, like it came out as well, I think it was yesterday that its organs uh, are going to be donated as well. That'll obviously help someone kind of live a life as well, which this has been cut short. Matt, you remember the uh, game, was it the famous game when we beat Man United in the Youth Cup where... You remember uh, Jordan having a pretty good game that, that It was evening. a league game, yeah. So when I used to work for the academy, I used to go watch the 16s and 18s quite a lot on a Saturday morning. Uh, and then, you know, Canal side, then go to Canal side afterwards and then on to the game. Uh, that was one of my routines that I used to do. And I remember uh, Jake Charles, Jordan, uh, Regan Booty, that, those kind of players around that time. And um, I remember Jordan Sinnott played central midfield for the under 18s, captain. And we drew three all against Man United. And Man United obviously dominated the majority of the game, but... Jordan Sinnott scored two free kicks and they were just so sweetly struck. And he, he had immense technical ability for that level, uh, did Jordan. Um, he, was, he was a genuinely very talented footballer. I know his dad had, you know, a good career as well. And he's, he's, um, he's not obviously not quite had the same one. But in terms of talent, he was a very talented footballer. And, and after the game as well, if you sort of, you know, as, as you're going off and you stood with everyone else, he'd always have time to talk to people. Really nice sort of down-to-earth lad. Whereas some... Some youth players can be a little bit uppity, whereas he was just a genuinely nice lad. Um, very good footballer. It's, it's a shame, really, what's happened. But for me, for one of my memories is him smashing a free kick into the stanchion against Man United up on the up on the fields, you know, past the canal at, at Canal side. It's a very, very, very good footballer and, and you know, very good human being as well. It's very sad what's happened. It is. Uh, Alex, we've retweeted it in our uh, feed today. But Alex Tan have done a lovely tribute to him. He was involved with the promotion when they got back into the, the National League proper and uh, very sombre, very poignant. So, yeah, so we have to start, obviously, with tragic news. But Jordan Sinnett, rest in peace. OK, thanks for that, Cosy. So what we'll do, we'll move on. So uh, welcome to uh, Andy Takes That Chance, uh, episode 55. Um We've got some good news this week. We've we've won a game of football. We've had a bit of a a, <laughs> a, a tough start to two thousand uh, two well twenty twenty. Um, went to Hull City on Tuesday night. Some of us watched it on streams. Uh, some of us didn't really want to pay thirty three quid. Some of us 
paid the money and uh, and enjoyed the night. Cosy, you were there at Hull. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bit of a uh, you sent us a picture and it looked like tumbleweeds around a bit of an empty stadium, but some good football on show. And you know you've been bemoaning a little bit about the lack of quality in terms of football. But last night there was uh, not last night, but Tuesday night we're recording on Thursday. There's some good passages of play from town and uh, uh, some bright sparks. Yeah, last week I think I sat here and bemoaned Hull's pricing and kind of hinted that I probably won't go. You know, you know how it works, this football, don't we you? Knew you'd go, you by the way. It? We all knew you'd go. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, honestly, unbelievable. But yeah, what a great night. Uh, what a strange game for so many reasons. Obviously not for the, was it plus 14 at the end? Uh, we'll come on to the injury later on. But yeah, a lovely surprise uh, there. Must admit, when we were in that, God, that Walton Street Working Men's Club, if anyone else was in it, you'll know what I mean. It was like going back to 1910, I think, if they had a bar. Uh, but yeah, when I saw the team sheet come through, Danny Simpson not playing, Sibakuna kind of playing at full back, and you kind of hold your breath, and Jonathan Ogg not fit enough to play, you did kind of wonder what was going to happen. But in the back of my mind, I've got to be honest with you, I'm not just saying it now, but I just did wonder, because they put a lot of heart and soul into a Chelsea game on the Saturday, obviously full stadium, they're coming back like, Three days later, you know, they given everything, played really well on Saturday, did watch some of that, and 16,000 fans less, there would hardly anyone there at one time. I didn't think there were going to be like eight, 9,000, but yeah, it was fantastic. And arguably the injury, which obviously will come on later on, changed the game, but I love what we did. I thought we played really well. And for the first time, I have to say, like you said there, Matt, I thought we played some nice football. Yeah, we did. It just it just felt strange because the, the crowd was... Um Quite very quiet. You could hear the Huddersfield fans quite a lot, but obviously not not thousands there. But good following, but not you know three thousand behind the goal making load. You could hear the but the whole fans were so quiet the whole way through. And it, and when you watched it on 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 the internet uh, legally, obviously or not legally, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you watch it, there's, there was like nobody at the front you know, of all no. this, all the stands. So it just looked like it was playing all in stars front. Yeah, yeah, it looked really weird. And and when Mooney is celebrated at the end, he's playing his his guitar. Yeah. You know, and the on the corner flag, there's nobody, you know, and it just, it, it just, I, th- I think the start, the football didn't quite befit the atmosphere. Usually when you play football like that, you hear mm. the, the crowd G up, don't they? And you can hear people getting excited. And Well, the only thing people got excited about in the first 10 minutes were Leeds getting beat 2-0 by Millwall and, you know, all fans started something about Leeds and we joined in, etc. So that's all kind of what was, was happening. But the first thing that kind of hit me in the first, Callum Grant, brilliant outstanding on the left. Back to his best, yeah. Oh, how good was he? He was brilliant. I mean, his goal took a deflection, but he deserved it. But he looked a threat. He looked, when he, but they're letting cutting all time. I just couldn't get that from all. It would, McCann had done his own work and what have you, but every time I got the ball, I thought something's going to happen here. He had so much time. Their right back was poor, wasn't he? But Carlin just, yeah, he was back, he was back to his best. And there's, there's a balance, Josh, isn't there? Because we've got, obviously got Carlin Grant coming in and that gives a lot of space to Toffolo. Toffolo's, one of his uh, specials, you know, that what he's good at is overlapping around the yeah, outside. Yeah, I think we got that's what we were getting from Lincoln, wasn't it, really, with Toffolo. You're getting the sort of player who's, who's able to overlap, who can defend, and like I say, it sort of it, it complements Kyle and Grant because we know Grant's going to go forward. If he cuts in, it's going gonna, gonna to create the space for Toffolo out wide. And it seemed like that first half, it worked a treat, really. So we were opening him up at, at will, really, down that side. Um, but it's good to see for the future as well, isn't it? That's two games. Toffolo's had, what, two good performances? Decent, de- well. decent yeah, debut, yeah. made a good tackle there, then, especially, like I say, that block. Um, and like I say, he had a really good game against Hull, so touch wood, it's um, boards well for the future. I just feel like he's fitting well at the championship level, actually. I know Richard yeah. Stearman's comments in the um, press conference today ahead of Saturday's game, he kind of said that Toffolo feels like a natural at this level and is kind of um, almost like he's always been playing the championship. So that certainly bodes well for the future. They both made a difference, though, don't they, Simon, with Toffolo and Stearman in that back four. And Schindler's looking as, as great as ever, doesn't he? He's, he's, he's classy as Schindler. But the back four all of a sudden just looks, it just looks settled with Stearman in there. It just looks good, doesn't it? Do you know, it just. It, it definitely does. I've got to make from the from start of the window, I said openly, I think left back was a position we needed to, to fix and fix quickly. But I didn't say that about centre half. I was quite comfortable with Stankovic there, and um, I felt that right wing was much more of a uh, uh, much more in dire need of um, reinforcements. Um, but but yeah, it still is. You're right. But actually, kind of, you can't argue that Stevens made a difference at centre half. Hundred um, percent. As harsh as that is on Stankovic, we do look a much more solid team, felt, much more experienced team. Felt for st- felt for Stankovic. It's just it's just the talking, isn't it, guys? I think it's like we said, don't we? Before we said on podcast, organisation as well. That Stevens. Yeah, it's leaders on yeah. pitch. Do you know what I mean? Like we've been. When Hogg's not playing, you need leaders on the pitch. Stearman's that. Do you know what I mean? He's had how many appearances at Premier League, Championship level? 
Um, so it's one of them. You, when you're getting someone like that in there who's, who can talk, who can organise, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Cosy, um, get off your phone. <laughs> Molly Messi. <laughs> but, Molly Messi, mate. But Trevor Chalabas, someone we spoke about when, a couple of weeks ago, we, we were getting a bit sort of fed up with some of the stick he was getting, wasn't he? Again, another good performance last night. Do you think he's starting to maybe turn a few people's attention around, do you think? He's, there's, I've seen a few more willing to sort of give him a bit of praise. I thought now. he played well. I had a bit of a ding-dong with some people on uh, Tuesday because it does annoy me in football, but this always it always has been and it always will be and every other club will be the same, but people click through the turnstiles with a... It doesn't matter what it does on the pitch. They've made their mind up. Preconceived notion. Preconceived and the won't budge. <laughs> So, like, I thought, I could feel it in the uh, the Brentford game. There were people, if he weren't passing it straight away, or we were taking more than one, two seconds, and that as well. So, they were getting his back. I thought it would be great on the Tuesday night. and But people just won't have it. But it was the same. I'm trying to think of some of the other boo boys back in the day. Anthony Kay, another one who people just won't, won't give it. Uh, yeah. Although he won't very good. Although, what's his name? That big left uh, midfielder that we had, tall guy. Uh what year? Oh, no era from Lee Clark. Talk Could be a number of people. <laughs> Oscar Gorban. Oscar Gorban. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I must admit, I didn't. But I don't know about you, but I like, I just judge it as I see it on the pitch. Yeah. So even if they've been terrible for 20 games, on the 21st game, I'll, I'll try and, and form an opinion. But some people just won't have it. But yeah, I'm, we've said it before, we'd, we'd see him off in the transfer window, I'd see you later, alligator. But Tuesday were good. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, and what I thought it were good as well, it were filling in a lot of times for Bakuna, were charging upfield kind of bit. False <laughs> you know. fullback, as uh, Danny Cowley calls yeah. it in his presses. He, 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 he was threading some right balls through Bakuna, but I think at times he forgot where he was. But again, he was dropping in there with Shalabar, so did a great job. And yeah, but I just think the jury's out. The jury's out. The jury's made up for a lot of people, so it doesn't matter. It's a bit same up full of men. He did the same thing at Ipswich last year. Apparently it was poor, sort of first... First half of the, until January at Ipswich, and then January onwards, he kicked in. I think he was, I don't know if he was their player of the year or one of the top couple of players of the year. And uh, Ipswich, so, but I know Ipswich didn't have the best of seasons, but apparently Trev did all right second half. So hopefully we see a, a better Trevor Chaloba second half of the, of the season. Are you guys wanted to jump yeah, in? Yeah, I mean, I think he's with me with Chaloba. So I mean, you know my thoughts sometimes on him. And it's one of them, I think, when he's aggressive, and apparently on Tuesday he was aggressive, and when I think, when we watch him and I look at him and, and he's aggressive and he's in the tackle and he's picking the ball up and striding forward, you can see there's a player there. I think sometimes you just, just when, mature, he, when he steps though, off it? that mark, you sort of carry him. But if we can get more out of him where he's going, he's aggressive, he's picking the ball up, driving forward, he's putting in tackles, I think that's when we'll get the best out of him. So like I say, touch wood. If he can carry on a little, if he did, like I said, I mean, he didn't go to the game, so I can't comment. But if he does, if he does, if he did have that good a game, if he can carry on that form, then great, because you've got you've got another player in there for the rest of the season, haven't you? I don't think he's good. Sorry, I don't think he's going to be a player who's ever going to win many popularity contests just because the way he is. Yeah, it's, it's his style. He's tall, it's his style. He's a tall yeah, central yeah, midfielder. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, he's not, yeah. not like Lewis O'Brien, who's kind of all action, you know, out and sleep yeah. kind of. He had a great game as well, by the way. But yeah. So let me put a question to you, Cosy. So thinking ahead to Fulham, Saturday. Matt's shaking his head at me in the corner because I'm messing up with his running no, order. No, no. But, I've, but, I've got no running order this week. You can knock <laughs> yourself out. So, hopefully, Jonathan Hogg's back fit. What do you do with your midfield two? Yeah, this is the thing. I'm, and now I'm wondering, obviously, what we'd do it on, on Tuesday, really. But to me, you don't change that team for, for Saturday. Hog on the bench? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. He was the one that went off. One, it's, it's on. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's a tough one. I, I couldn't pick who to drop. If Bakuna's at right back then Trev plays for me because of the filling in role that he did. You know, and that, that whole link, we'll, we'll talk about it. sounds like Simpson's short. going to be fit from what they were saying today in the press if, conference. If Simpson's playing, then there's more of an argument for Hogg. But who, who do you drop? Because Trev and O'Brien, there's, there's not much between them in the last two or three games, to be honest. They're both both good players. Yeah. And, and yeah, O'Brien's played quite a bit of 10. Kona. Really really good game. Game. I mean, O'Brien's played quite a bit of 10, but obviously Emile Smith-Rowe's come in there now and, and showing yeah, real promise, so I wouldn't, wouldn't change so, that. No. So, but it's nice to have some competition with places. Yeah, yeah. Crikey, this is what we were crying out for in December, I think wasn't you maybe it? maybe so. would probably drop Bakuna just because purely he's not a full back. And, and, but then he wasn't really on Tuesday because we just, as usual, just wandering about. But he would create an havoc, really. And I'm, I'm going to say not my problem, do you know, to that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's yeah. a nice problem to have. That's, I know, but... We'll, we'll we'll go on. We'll talk about Emil Smith around a bit, but it's a good point, Cosy, to have a discussion point because I've only written one thing down for the game. Really, was about the discussion point about Bakuna and his best role. What what do you guys think? I, I, I was going to tweet out, but uh, HTFC opinions beat me to it, and I just thought I'll steal theirs. It's, so thanks for that HTFC opinion. So um, 
Where where do you see the best role for Bakuna? Because in my in my view, is is he came in as a central midfielder. Cowley's like to play four two three one. He's not a ten. He, he, he prefers to run from deep, but he's not disciplined enough or wired <laughs> right for the so. two. So you can't really play him in that two because he's off and about. But he's playing. He's played him in this role a couple of times. As is what if you play football manager, you'll know what this is. It's like an inverted wing back and what that means and. Pep Guardiola was doing it with Fabian Delph in our first season in the Premier League where Delph would play left back, but it would drift into central positions and then look to dictate the play, which you can do if you've got 80% possession. You know, it's a lot easier to do it, you know, when you've got that. But when you're sort of 50-50 like us, it can you can get caught out. But Bakuna, what he's had him doing, and he had him doing it in another home game, again, I think it was against, it were a bit earlier, it might have been Birmingham somewhere. Held against Preston away as well. Yeah, of, yeah, he did, yeah. But again, the goal against Preston, he comes in and he plays that inverted. And what that allows is, it allows a, a sort of a transition and Trev drops in and then it causes a bit of a moment in midfield where they're like, oh, hold on, who do I go with here? And Bakuna's off, you know, through the middle and he's, one of his strengths is threading balls through, isn't it? You know, he's a good ball mm. player. So where do you play him? Because you, if we're playing 4 2 3 one, he's good as an eight in a three in midfield, you know, where he can break, but we're obviously not going to play that a lot. So what do you do with Bakuna? There's your conundrum really, because um, he's 22 and he? he probably needs to nail a position at some point. What do you do with him? Josh, go with you first. Oh, God, cheers for that. Um, it's one of the minutes hard one because he performs well in really any position that we've sort of seen him in. Um, for me, like I said, the 4 2 3 1, it depends what Cowley likes to do with his sort of two, two midfielders back because he likes to sort of play them two holding roles, the two double sixes, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, if you were to say Bakuna's going to fill in there and be more of the driving force leading towards the 10, he could probably do that as like a number eight sort of position. But he seems to like two more defensive minded um, midfielders he's, sitting in there. He likes discipline, doesn't he? Um, it's hard because like say, could you, could you put him on the right? Would he do more of a job than what Kachunga's doing? You could argue, you could argue that, but he's not really a right, he's not a right winger, a but he's played there. He? Puts a great ball in the box. Um, like he drifts in, does score goals. It's it's hard when you've got other players in the team that have got sort of nailed down positions, aren't they? So he's sort of drifting in and out and he's trying to fill him in. But for me, I'd love him to see next to someone like Hogg playing that sort of that deep of two midfield roles behind sort of Smith Rowe. But he seems to like sort of Chalibur and Hogg or O'Brien in them roles at the moment, doesn't he? Right now, for me, maybe a bit of unpopular opinion, um, off the bench. Uh, so I think back to kind of early on in the season, um, when Cowley's first took over, I think it was Blackburn springs to mind, Hull at home springs to mind. He's come off the bench and made a real impact, um, kind of almost grabbed the game. When the, the game stretched, yeah. yeah. When the game stretched and, and been able to kind of add something, um, there'll be occasions when he's come off the bench um, and not done that. Brentford at home perhaps been an example. But I think right now for me, still not sure what side of Bakuna is, or what Personality going to turn, turn, turn up and step on the field, yeah. and for me, it's still a little bit of a luxury in that sense. It's not so it's not I much trust. It's that discipline and trust, isn't it? That exactly, yeah. And, and I, for me, were I picking a team, that I'd be bringing him off the bench right now, kind of around that 65, 70 minute mark, depending on the circumstance of the game and seeing what impact it can make. Um, so maybe I'll shut the question a little bit there, but that's, that's no, what no. I, do I think off the bench, he's, he's Danny Cowley referred to him as like a go to player, didn't he? As a what did he didn't call him a sub? He called him a game changer, didn't he, or something? Yeah, rather than that's very American. I have game yeah. changers. Yeah. Yeah. We've got yeah. a game changer. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to say sorry, so I'll say no more than that. But the one thing I'll throw into it is, why did we sign Andy King? I know it's a long season and injuries are going to happen, but it just seems an odd signing to me because he, again, he's where's he going to play if ever? I don't think he's. I think he's just. I think he replaces. I don't think we ever really replaced the Hudson Whitehead in the dressing room. Thing. Do you know, I think there's a lot. Surely to Andy said. King's got to want more than that. Andy King's he probably for, does. wants to get into the Euros. He wants to actually hopefully play some football. He hasn't played some football for God knows how long. Half a season, not playing at Rangers, yeah. Andy. Yeah. So he's yeah. going to want yeah. some football. Gonna, gonna to be fair, there's a lot of games still to go, so maybe he'll get involved. He'll in get, it, yeah, so. he's I, got I, to take I agree with you. Because Pritchard it mm. does come back. Seemingly, his Pritchard's not going to leave in this window. It doesn't look like it now. Um, if Pritchard does come back and play some games in the second half of the season, surely he's got to be ahead of Andy King in the picking order, as has Emil Smith Rowe. Andy King's going to potentially find himself in the same situation as what he was before. I won't play Andy King as a 10 as a start, though. He's probably going to start in that double, isn't it? That double yeah, pivot, yeah. So, but who for? Ball. Again, you've got Hogg, you've got Trev, you've got... I just think... Sorts of, again, so I just Andy King didn't midfield, excite me, really. and he still doesn't excite me. We're crying out for a right winger. Go and sign a right winger. That's why I'd have done. i tell you what, though. Some of our fans were shocking on Tuesday. Kachunga got some bad abuse, and I mean abuse. So it was quite beautiful that he got that crossing for the... Uh, 
But again, it's just like he were having a decent game on Tuesday, but people just, uh, I mean, I, I've been frustrated with him and I, I probably wouldn't give him a new contract in the season, but just he's a, got a town shirt on and just get behind him. And then for Abado, it's, I'm glad he's going off because he's SHIT. That's garbage. We don't want people like that there. Come on, get behind me, the team. I probably said before, save your frustrations for the Akabi, for Mbenza, for Congola, people who have down tools, yeah, the people yeah. who have given up on the club. Lee Kachunga, I currently agree, is not the player he was. He's not delivering the points he was Tommy two Smith. seasons ago. For me, he just misses he Tommy Smith. He misses someone getting he around him the, and putting a cross in. He doesn't have he's, Danny Simpson you know, going on the outside. and He's, he's taking on the full-back and the but winger. At least he's at trying. Times. At least he's giving his all. And, and you, can never, you can never say Kachunga's never tried, have we? That's the thing. That's we've said right. it loads of times out when we've been on the podcast. The day you say Kachunga hasn't tried. Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, you know what you're going to get. You he's know not a winger. He never has been a winger. He, he wasn't signed as a winger. He was signed as a nine, arguably a kind of a 10. Yes, he plays in that kind of maybe three behind the striker, but he's not an out-and-out out kind of number seven like an Andre Kanchelski who's going to run. It was a great ball. The game was bizarre. I thought we should have been out of sight. I thought we could have been two, three up and it wouldn't have flattered us. But well, as soon as Smith Rowe skied that, I turned to someone and said, I bet that'll cost us here because this is Usfield Town. And then all of a sudden, I said, the goal. I mean, we, I had no kind of view of it. I don't think any of us did behind that goal because at first it looked like Grabber with a disaster. But then obviously, from what I mean, I, to be fair, I haven't even seen it on a replay yet. Steam and the camera seems to be on the moon. It just yes. looks odd at replay. Mm. You don't really know what happens. It's there's just- there's McGuinness is fighting with... Grabara and he just puts his elbow across his throat at just the wrong time. So as a goalkeeper, that you need to it, Grabara tries to throw him off, but McGuinness is a beast. You know, he's a monster. He's a big. He would have. He's yeah, a big he's lad. Proper build. He's a good, he's a good yeah. player. You know, he's a big, big, you know, him, strong lad. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he tries to throw him off, can't. And then McGuinness puts his arm across his throat, yeah. and he just can't get out. He's, he's not strong enough. And he th- needs to be stronger. But I think he's, he needs, he needs see to be six months on steroids to be strong enough to <laughs> and throw and Josh and McGinnis well, off. I'd be very, very surprised <laughs> if you see a referee give a penalty against the goalkeeper in that situation. We're charging out of his goal. When, when they were about to kick off, he was nearly on centre spot because he was so mad about it. He's but, done that a few times. He needs to calm yeah. down a little bit, don't he? Because he's got booked a few times now for dissent. As, as well, I blame myself because I was just big, big enough steam and because uh, I thought he had another great game. And, he did. And again, I'd, you I'd, can hear him shouting. I think what I like about him is shouting people, yeah. get back, Janino, get back, so-and-so. Come on. Uh, I hear him having a yeah. right go at Schindler. And, and this is music to our ears. He just looks such a character, this guy. And it's the, quality, isn't it? Yeah, it does that. Yeah. Honestly, he'd... And the, the, the clip where he, um, Sheffield United get promoted and he's had perhaps a, a <laughs> one or two beers too many. If, if anyone who's listening who hasn't seen that, go look that up because that's... Uh, the thing for me that, yeah, that stands out with Elphick, obviously similar age, similar backgrounds, etc. A lot of games at a good level. But to me, he looks still got a yard. He looks he's still got left and tank. I thought Elphick, yeah, all right, he was coming back. I'll, I'll give him that. But looked a bit kind of slow. I think he's still got a bit of pace. He looks as though he's still got... Plenty left in the tank. He looks a superb signing. It's like he's got a desire as well, actually. Yeah. He, he wants to win. He wants to play football. Yeah. I'm not saying Tommy Elphick didn't have that, but you kind of see that in spades in, in Richard Stearman. I hate I hate using the phrase legs gone, but it's 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 not a nice phrase, is it? My legs went at about 17, so I can't say anything. <laughs> but, it? I know, I never had the legs. <laughs> got shortest legs in the world. But, you know, he, he looks a bit slower than he did in his prime, let's say, Tommy Elphick. And he, he, he just looked like he was getting into a good spot and he got that injury, which is a shame because... Off off the field, Tommy Elphick's a brilliant talker. He was he did the Brighton versus Bournemouth game. He was he was excellent. He's got a real future when his playing career finishes. He's got a future in in coaching, in media, in all sorts. He's he's really good at you know talking about the game. Uh, Grant had that. Grant had that save. Obviously, Smith Rowe missed. Grant, he was a good save. To be fair, I thought he were going in on near post. But then after they scored, we were all over the shop. And to me, they looked only one winner. If you were betting in play, you'd have put your mortgage on all City and. The man who was the big, and people will have it because they like to have a go at him, but the man who was a big faction getting the points is the man who was in hospital for the last two days. He mm-hmm. made a, the, the, sec, the first save. Saves. The first save was sensational. The first save was sensational. And this is after he's had that. He feels hard done by. The guys batted him out of the way, etc., etc. To come back from that shows a lot of character. He's only 22 and, you know, keepers. Not even that, it's 20. Yeah, to, oh, sorry, not even that. But, like, keepers, to me, they get better with age. So yeah. I, I, I don't think he's, like, a Steve Harper, a, you know, a legendary keeper, a Nico Vassa, maybe, or what have you, but he's a good keeper. And I just want to have it me that is. No, I like that. I think he's no, he's, no, he's a good he's, keeper. He's a 20 year old kid. And we'll miss him. We'll miss him. We will. He's, uh, I, th- I, th- I actually think, oddly, um, the 40 minute break for yeah, Krabara yeah, actually well, helped us. He did. Because it he took did. the sting out of Hull. And Huge. then after that, we were straight back on top. So. So what do we do with the goalkeeper position? And so kind of the, 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 the latest certainly that I've heard is that kind of Grabara's injury is quite serious. He's going to be out for um, potentially or 
um, a minimum of 28 days. I think is what Danny Cowley said in his conference today. It's going to be six to eight weeks away, isn't it? Because I think once, even after 28 days, you then need two weeks that's, clearance. Yeah, yeah, that's just it. It's like 20 days, you can't play. You can't then he's got concussion. Concussion. He's got yeah. concussion. Can't can you? So he's got, he's got bruising, mm. I think, going on. So once that heals, then you have to have your two-week clearance period. So he's a minimum six weeks. So, so And Danny Cowley said today that seemingly they're going to leave um, Ryan Schofield at Livingston. I don't know if there's a recall clause there or not. As well as, as what well. injury is he got? I, mean, I think it's just a thigh injury. Presumably Ben yeah. Haber can't come back in. So Danny Cowley's kind <laughs> well, of signal. Yeah, no one will let him. <laughs> not sure we want him. Um, he, I've changed <laughs> the locks and everything. Yeah. So it's interesting. <laughs> Danny Cowley's signaled today that they're going to try and um, bring someone in the next couple of days into that goalkeeper position. I'm really intrigued to know if it's um, someone to start or if it's someone that's kind of back up for Joel Coleman. Um, I guess we'll wait and see. I think it's a start, me personally. Maybe there's a lot of games, isn't there? There's yeah, six games. There's like so six or seven yeah. games in Feb, isn't there? So I think I think he'll be getting someone in who can come straight in personally. I think Coleman might play against Fulham on Saturday. I, I expect it that he'll yeah, play. Yeah, will do. Uh, after that, it just depends on Joel Coleman. If he plays well against Fulham, then it's harsh to drop him, isn't it? So it's, he's going to get tested against Fulham. So play well, Joel. It depends Joel, who we can bring in as well, doesn't it? Any rumours? Yeah. Not nothing. Yeah, I've so not you know, seen anything yet. It's, it's on the fresh, isn't it? So. I, I, I know it's ve- it, this isn't possible in a way, but I'd just love to see Alex Smithies back at some point in the summer. It's, it's like who I just think it's just it just feels right to the more he's, he's never coming back now, but in the future I think he's think. But the, we've been linked with a Portsmouth goalkeeper earlier in the window. Mm. I forgot about that. Uh, Trouble is though, Matt, it's going to bugger us up because the noise that's coming out of the club is budget etc. So I don't think we'll be able to get a wing and a keeper personally. Mm. I know there's obviously taught that you know Flo's just about signed and, and Ben's you know, is pretty and much Ben's gone. Support, I, I think it's going to be either or, to be honest with you. Since I can see someone like David Martin from West Ham coming in. They brought Randolph, so he maybe fits the bill. I think kind of Luke Steele kind of is maybe up for grabs as well. Well, when he Luke Steele, I think. Yeah, so he it. might be up for grabs. So I think it'll be someone on a, on a loan, kind of presumably for, to the end of the season now, but uh, it's watch about the same space. level as Coleman and Luke Steele. They're, they're all right, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I feel I'll find someone at we'll a better see. level. And that's yeah. my point. I was. I, who, ste- who steps up to be? Who steps up to bench? That's another one. There's a, a kid called Jacob Chapman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's decent. Yeah, he's decent. Yeah, he's decent. Decent. Yeah, he's decent. There's um, what I've seen is better than the, the Italian lad. Yeah, Bella Gambi, um, Yeah, I don't but, know. If, uh, I don't know what he is now. I think he's an England trainer. England mentions as well. I think he's been at both, hasn't he? Yeah. But Chapman's I've heard quite good things about. So um, he looks he's been involved in the squad from time to time. Yeah, only so. highlights, but he looks he looks good to me. The goal for us though, we were bombing forward and. You know, I just thought, come on, give us this moment. Again, it were like Charlton all over again. And the, and the ball, they were beautiful cross from Kachunga. And, and, and I were just wanting to edit. So I was nearly jumping out of a seat to edit there. <laughs> they wanted an ad edit, what it? And Muniz scored the yeah. place, went absolutely nuts. I mean, a lot of empty seats, but it was funny. I saw I saw the goal on Sky and it's like, there's loads of people just like trying to rush after Moody. It was run towards the corner flag, playing that guitar. <laughs> we're going mental. There's all them whole chavs and that as well. And they were like, absolutely, they couldn't take it. We were losing his shit. It was brilliant. Pardon my French. <laughs> Just what life's all about. It was. I mean, we've took six points off, but we never get hardly get anything off these guys. So. First, first ever win at that yeah. stadium, KC Stadium. Yeah, so We're brilliant. First time we've beaten Hull in Hull in a league game since 1992. Yeah. And massive as God. well when you think of them other results. Couldn't believe it. It's like yeah, everyone else won, didn't they? It's a massive win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wigan, Wigan. Uh, they're not. There's not that. Luton. The no. team, teams down at the bottom aren't actually that bad. There's no sort of. There's no Bolton this year, is oh, there? There's, yeah. there's, there's, there's some the, well, Wigan actually look at their side and AC Milan are linked with Wigan. I remember saying to you a few months ago, yeah. I like that Wigan left back and AC playing Milan at, are linked playing to at Leeds Saturday. So let's vote for a change Leeds win because we uh, we want to get as far away from the danger zone as possible, shall we say? Yeah. So transfers. Let's let's have a thing of transfers. So sad day, a day of a day of mo- moaning, if you like. Uh, Aaron Moy finally left the club permanently. To go to Brighton, I was a bit expected, so you know I'm not I'm not going to delay on it or anything. But it's just a bit for me. Aaron Moy, hands down, the best player I've seen at Huddersfield Town, and I would very much question anybody who thinks they've seen anyone better. Yeah, he's, he's up there, up there with Marcus Stewart for me, and you sort of I, I Dean got him for a time, but he yeah. was, was class one. Eh? Yeah, it's just, one of them. It was sad, but. It's, it's just the, the I used to love. I just used to love turning up and just watching him control a game. I've never seen a town midfielder just control a game on strings for ninety well, minutes. Easy, didn't it for him that thing? Yeah, the, those reverse balls that he used to do. You know that sort of reverse pass that he always used to pull out of nowhere. He used to be going one way and then he'd reverse reverse someone in. It just such a unusual skill for someone in the championship to be able to do it and the weight of pass as well. And he used to get some stick for corners and stuff. But you look back at all the corners we've scored over the last three years. It's usually Moy who's taking them. And, you know, the first goal in the Premier League, which the own goal, etc. And Moyes balling for Mounier. 
just just a quality footballer and genuinely wishing the very best. You know, we, we've we've seen him during his sort of peak years, if you like. What's your favourite Aaron Moyment? Shall we say? No, that's terrible. Yeah, we've done that. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. I know. But um, what would you say, Simon? What's, on what's your favourite sort of? <laughs> I get thrown off. But go on. What's your favourite? Oh, favourite one? Yeah, there's two. There's so many, isn't there? But what? What? What do you think? What? Do you, what's your favourite sort of Aaron Moy moment? There's, there's so many. I mean, as all those you mentioned, I think the other one that kind of perhaps sticks in my mind is um, second Premier League game, Newcastle at home. Um, kind of the, the goal there. I think we've gone to win, don't we? 1-0. Yeah. Is it 1-0? Yeah, one Definitely yeah, gone to yeah, win. 1-0, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, 1-0. Yeah, one one um, a switch quickly in field to Moy again, and Moy's looking at the penalty area. 1-2 with Kachunga. Here's Moy, right-footed. 1-0, Huddersfield Town. A goal of fabulous... Com- a goal of fabulous quality. Uh, that kind of makes it two wins out of two and kind of arguably it was that start to the season that kind of kept us in the Premier League in, in that Definitely. year. So yeah, that, that one kind of very much sits in my mind. I think the other one kind of um, is the through ball to the Patra at Chelsea mm. that kind of um, obviously keeps in the league and yeah, uh, yeah fond memories. Just, We're all kind of just smiling around the room at one another now <laughs> thinking, yeah, wasn't that he good time? Like he's staring off into the distance <laughs> forlornly looking over there yeah. as well. Um, Josh? Uh, yeah, just saw the two sides said there. I think one I laughed at you earlier about always oh, gives me a little bit of a smile when it were at Elland Road, little rainbow flick over at Alex Mowat's head when he fell over yeah. and just turned away from him and ran off with ball. It always makes me laugh when I see that back. Um, yeah, just like I said, the Newcastle goal because it sort of you felt like you were there. Then you felt you were you were in the Premier at the big stage. Like Palace, I think everyone was just pissed up <laughs> and it was just a bit of a laugh on it. And it, you can't remember when it really happened, but. Yeah, it was a big one, wasn't it? Because it was his first Premier League game at home and it was it were a really good goal at settled game and it had to be him that did it. But it's um like you said, we, we saw we, we were just wishing best of luck though. We saw some great bits for him. Two good, penalties good to have seen him. You know, both yeah. shootouts scored against that Sheffield Wednesday where Westwood got a bit the of a one. bit of something. Yeah. Great penalty against Reading. Only one to change direction. Yeah. Well, they all changed direction and then he was the one not to from the Sheffield Wednesday one and he just so I'm just I know where I'm putting this and bang, and it goes. Brilliant penalty. Cosy, you put Baldy's best, didn't you, to uh, my tweet out? Yeah, I always just think the best players have just don't waste energy. You know, I'm looking for others to see Messi quite a few times or what have you. They don't waste energy. They don't charge about like an idiot. Adam Moy were one of those guys. Never really waste energy. Always seem to have that extra yard. Total class. And I, I'll shock you, my, my favourite were Wolves because it were like a last hurrah for me. We were, I mean, to be fair, at the time we thought 14th, what have you, but it was, it was sensational that day. Jolie ball into the box. Moy shot. 1 0 Huddersfield Town. Aaron Moy's first time shot brings him his first goal of the season. Town pounce on Wolves' concession. What a strike by Towns Aussie. It really is Wolves nil. Huddersfield Town 1 at Molyneux. He were brilliant. And Scott, Scott to me, them. yeah, just rules above the mediocre that we've been producing most of that season to deliver a performance that give us all up that maybe we could that Wolves game was on, on Sky they were just going on about Ruben Neves Ruben Neves Ruben Neves yeah. and that game Aaron Moy absolutely destroyed Ruben Neves he was just just such a good player but yeah Aaron Moy slow strike 2-0 down a double for Aaron Moy who now runs away to the dancing Huddersfield Town fans of Molyneux yeah, you know, different class and that as well. I, I were quite sh- well. She shouldn't be shocked anymore because Twitter and what have you and the way fans are these days. But the outrage coming out with the fee. What did they really think, Adam? My all right, Huddersfield Town. So yeah, I'll sign a new contract for you, but make sure you get twenty million for me. Yeah, oh god, honestly, oh, no. what Jesus? What did they think? There's no way to sl- sign that if we were going to sell for ridiculous money. It was never going to happen in a million years and. I think to all, I had some people say, oh, he's got a three years on his... He just, shut up, man. He could have walked away for nothing. Probably should have walked away for nothing. And from what I've heard, we're getting more than five. But, you know, it's honestly, he did us a favour. And But people using it as a stick well. to beat Phil Hodgkinson with, come on, guys, what is going on? The, the fee is quite funny because Brighton, uh, Andy Naylor, who's, I've only had like two dealings with him, only seen him twice, and he's come across as a bit of a whopper both times, yeah. to be honest. He's, but he's supposed to be very good yeah. at what he does. But he's... um. He uh, he reckons Bright- Brighton paid a lot less than five million for him, and uh, from the Huddersfield end, from the noises doing around from you in the no types, they're reckoning it's over ten. So you know, who knows? It's there's a big, there's a huge sort of gap in between <laughs> what both are saying. If, we, if we've got back anywhere near what we paid for him, it's been a good deal, hasn't it? Because let's be honest, 
he were going for note if he hadn't signed that deal at the end of the season. Yeah, he's done the best. So for anything, anything, if we've got anywhere close to that, we would give be adding. If it were five million up front plus the loan plus the loan fee, even if it were eight, if eight million pound, if it's anything round about that, it's better than note because we were getting note. I went to Twitter and asked people for their favourite moments as well. So, uh, my, favourite my, moments. Favourite moments, hey. yeah. So, what I had was, my, one of mine is, I just remember him going to Australia to play for Australia and then getting the, the plane back on the Friday night and then Saturday, 12.30 kickoff, playing at Elland Road and scoring the win at Elland Road. I just thought, the guy's a machine. That's incredible. Do you know, for fly fly across the world and fly back, play, you know, fly across, play a game, fly back. Get up, mm. put your shoes and socks on. Go I'll tell you what, I was proud. Leeds United. I, I was proud at World Cup when we, when he were in our team and he were playing well. And I was sat. I remember sat on an old day and Leeds thinking, he plays for my team and yeah. that's Aaron Moy. And I was proud as punch. Me, yeah. it yeah. wasn't just Aaron Moy. Actually, was it, it kind of? It, there was a few kind of players. Yeah, Zank 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 didn't he? Squad. Mm. Was it nice to say kind of my club that? Yeah, my yeah. club. Yeah. Honestly, my club. Yes, Huddersfield's Aaron Moy. It's like I hope we have that again at some point. It'd be nice. Uh, yeah, so Twitter, Cam Fry says his penalty against Leicester made his biggest fan Bella uh, after, you know, the cancer treatment for Bella. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, made a smile when she came so over from the nice. USA. That was, yeah, that's a good one. Nice moment, that. The Tanzanian Terrier says a goal at Leeds, Man United. Aaron Moy pounces. Moy is on the ball and in space now, on the counter-attack. Ince arrives on the overlap. Here's Tom Ince, he cuts in field, then outside. He shot block. Aaron Moy! 1-0 Huddersfield Town! 1-0 Huddersfield Town against Manchester United! And whatever the outcome of this match, and of Huddersfield Town's season as a whole, frame the moment, Town fans! Newcastle, first Premier League games at home, and those assists against Man United and Chelsea. But his, uh, his biggest moment is his connection with Australian Huddersfield, spreading the word word of Huddersfield Town in Australia. That's a good point as well. Uh, Wayne, Huddersf Wayne, Man United goal, but also for appearing to be a genuinely decent, unassuming bloke with no airs and graces. Best best I've seen in a Definitely town. Definitely no airs. No airs and graces. Oui. Yeah. Uh, and then at Slam Dance Cosmo says that absolutely top draw strike delivered all the way from Australia. Oggy's classic commentary. <laughs> yeah. Australia. I always use that. It's such brilliant. Oh, he rolls the R's. It's brilliant. Brilliant, Oggy. But Leeds are it straight to Moy again who shoots. What a goal, Aaron Moy! An absolute thunderbolt delivered all the way from Australia. I, I just love technical footballers who can pass a move. And, you know, he could pass his way out of a sardine tin, could Aaron Moy. He's just, just next level for me. Probably Without a doubt, most talented player I've seen for naturally talented. And like you say, just makes it so easy. You know, everything's just so easy. Uh, there's players who make things look so hard all the time. And just Aaron Moy is just coasting through. You know, like he's Not on a magic team carpet. effort, but, you know, on about fees and stuff. But yeah, it is efforts. Surely we'd have never got into the Premier League. But then I suppose, where do you draw the line? You could Aram- say, Aram- Aram- does, if, if Aram- is not in midfield, we don't get in the playoffs yeah, that season. I'm 100%. Who else has left? Adama Diakabi. <laughs> And your uh, what's that washing bag? Was <laughs> do you know half the half the this is an absolute gale outside. force winds outside Matt's the studio and this That's, yeah uh, my little boy's uh, slide, slide cover is that was flying <laughs> past window was. I think it's just gone into <laughs> mills over Brilliant. there. Uh, are we going to have the same sort of uh, eulogise of Adama Diakabi or shall we just move on for him? Just move on. Good luck, Adama. Forrest. Did he come on on Wednesday against, or oh, Tuesday night? Yeah, he, he came on. I think didn't he? Press uh, Joe Lolly, I think. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That's wow, interesting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Adama Diakabi, to be honest, I hope he does well before he's buying. That's it's best, it's best for us. Yeah, it's yeah, best for us. Yeah, it rips it up, then, yeah. there's, no, there's no point cutting your nose off to spite your face. I hope, hope he does well. I hope he gets signed at the end. And I just don't really want to see don't really want to see him back. And, and Ben's are apparently leaving as well this window. So today, tomorrow, today's Thursday, Friday, he could be off. Uh, I presume back to sort of France, uh, Belgium, that sort of way. So that adds your nice Probably further down the line than anyone. In oh, Turkey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Is it Kimpasa? It sounds like yeah. Kielbasa, doesn't yeah. it? The, the sausage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, apparently Kimpasa from Turkey, yeah. he's, he's been in talks with. So again, Premier League football, yeah. a good look. Uh, if it's on loan, let's hope it's to view to a permanent. It's probably one to do a full review next week because obviously moves, we could get some people in. But for, just as we speak now, what a window it's been for the Sword Town AFC. It's been proper class, hasn't it? Yeah. If we could Total get... respect because we've been slaughtered in our own people for chances, aren't we, for months on here, and rightly so with mm. some of the stuff. But it's clear, we had our plan, we've executed our plan, and honestly, we've got to give a lot of credit, I think, for the club. Yeah, for say how much doing. I like David Webb might have a part of that. Uh, do you know what I mean, brought in? Well, David Webb, Danny Cowley's got yeah, a strong say. Actually got a, man, got a manager and someone in there to actually do the role now, aren't we, for this transfer window, it looks like, with a, 
They're doing well yeah. with it. But you, you look at them all, Stearman, solid, looks good. And I know he's only played a Leader, couple of games, but proper, proper man, what we needed. Proper player. Toffolo looks a quality fullback. Yep, yep. His first touch is a bit loose, but you know he's a good a good fullback and that'll definitely get better as he as he moves yeah, on. Really good football. I just love how he bombs on and he's, he's good defending as well. Yeah. Like Cosa, you were saying, you know, I, I quite like Jaden Brown to a point. I think he's got a good future. He's probably not quite for now for 46 mm-hmm. games in the championship. But you you were saying, I hate fullbacks who don't block the ball. Harry Tuffalo blocks the ball. Oh, and blocks the man, gets, blocks uh, everything. I think he enjoys to get smashed <laughs> by a football. I love it. Yeah, I like him a lot. And we, we're starting to look good. The back four looks good. It looks transformed. Yeah, I feel a bit sorry for Stankovic because he, he, he done so well. But you had to get it's, it's the leadership there. qualities yeah. that Stearman brings are just... Are just Andy King, we've not obviously not seen the best of yet, but again, professional attitude, you know, yeah. so many whoppers in the dressing room. You just you just need people like that around. And whether it's a good move for Andy King or for us, you know, it'll probably unveil itself as it goes on down the line. But a good window. I think we just, just that Kept one. Kept all the Carl and Grant. Yeah. As we speak, there's another day. You never know, do you, in this uh, window? It's just nuts. Obviously, but, West Brom, I think, were the only one that were sniffing on. Yeah, there. Bournemouth and Wolves were linked, but it didn't seem very nah, concrete, did it? West it just Brom seemed a bit more, paper talk, yeah. well. But, but yeah, we just we just that one right winger probably shot. It sounds so greedy, doesn't it? Sort of saying, we Ramadan, need, we where are you? Up. Come back, Ramadan, <laughs> Sobe. No. <laughs> God. Uh, he's, he's scored six goals this when year. When did he so. play? I think I saw him play. Oh, he played Man City, he's didn't injured, he? He's injured as oh, well. He's injured. Yeah, he's he injured played Man City, didn't he? He did for that 10 hey. minutes. He didn't do too bad. He came I on. He a t-shirt. I was there when Ramadan <laughs> played. <laughs> oh, dear. He actually scored against us, yeah. didn't he, for Stoke as well. He came. He actually played two good games against us for Stoke. I presume that's the whole Junior Mendes signing. You had two good games against us. <laughs> We've done a Junior Mendes and signed him on the yeah, back, back, up, back of that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so one wing. So we've not really had anyone linked. I think Boyle from Hibernian has been linked today. I don't really know much about him. I asked my cousin, who's the SPL expert. He listens to this podcast as my cousin for some reason. So say hello to Ben, <laughs> if you like. Uh, but Isaac Success linked as well. Do you remember when he destroyed us? He played. We played Watford, didn't we? Sort of October time last season. And he played up front and he absolutely ruined us as the solo striker did Isaac's success. So I kind of think of him as a centre forward rather than... His attitude has been with garbage. We don't want anyone right. like that in our club. We've had enough I saw a few tweets stuff. saying he's, he's got a suspect attitude. I'm a honk him, mate. Yeah, if, if Bernardo Mac, was shocking. Yeah. Yeah, so no, we don't he's, want him. he's an interesting one. Cosy's ruled him out. So David Webb, if you're listening, Cosy says no to <laughs> yeah. no success. So. Uh, no success. No success. <laughs> um, Adoma was the one I saw as linked with earlier. I'm not sure if people are just putting two and two together. Adoma. I haven't seen the Akabi going into Forest and potentially Adoma. Oh, right. Forest. Adoma was sold. Um, I just Adoma. can't see Forest letting anyone go where they are in the league at the moment. They kind of suck. So no, they, they need pl- they need cover, yeah. don't they? I don't, I don't see it. So I'm um, surprised at that. Presumably, those conversations would have happened when. Nice. Yeah, if we can get a winger in, though, I think we, no one can complain at winger really, can we? It's been, it's been brilliant. We've got, it, got a lot of players out we didn't want in. Considering covered, covered January, well. and Considering it's a January, January window as well. So I think we, if we can get a winger in tomorrow, and which sounds like a keeper, I think we've uh, I think we've done really well. I think I think everyone would deserve massive credit, especially with it being, because it's a January window and it's notoriously difficult. You can tell people have been working hard to get players in, and they're the right players, which is really key. Right yeah. attitudes, and the whole attitude of the squad just seems to have turned again, doesn't it? And I think trouble is what you don't know is, like for example, Congolo are full and paying all the wages, and Benza will the team play all the wages. And that's it's all right saying they're gone, but you know how much is paying what, and you know you'd like to think there are some strange rules yeah. around as well. Even if they go permanently, Isaac and Benza cost a lot of money. We'll probably still be paying him off in two years. You know, if if he goes, we'll, we'll still be paying him off. And it's not just that. If he goes, and he, I think there's a, I don't know if it's just UK to UK, but if he goes and we force it, we force him out, and he doesn't request the move, he's then entitled to all his uh, signing on fee, which is paid over the cost of his contract, has his loyalty bonuses there all due, and also if he doesn't ask to leave, then and the other club can't cover all his wages, even in a permanent transfer, we're then obligated to cover the shortfall between the two as well, which is also so. We'll be still paying for Dear Carbon and Benza for years to come, and I'm sure that'll probably move come on. Out. You're depressing me now, aren't you? So we happy we won on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and let's season cards. That was good news, wasn't it? Yeah, season cards is on 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 the agenda as well. Frozen prices. Uh, I think can't knock it, can you? No, most people I think I've seen are quite pre- pleased with um with that. I'm I'm quite pleased. I'll I'll renew I'll renew our three season cards. Quite happy with that, Cosy. I think you'll always be there, regardless, won't you? Even if it's thirty-three quid a game, you yeah, say I mean, you probably won't, a new there. job, miss a few games, what have you? But it's got to be even at two hundred fifty pounds. It's you know, even if you miss ten, it's still a profit, isn't it? It's, mm. it's amazing. I was I was doing a little bit of homework uh, just to have a look at what others were charging, and I think Wigan charged two nine nine 
uh, it's not, Preston, it's not bad, well, it Preston that do not do too bad and then everyone else were just a joke and God some of the 400s I think Derby 400 Derby, yeah. Sheffield yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday. They're, they're like they're as right skankers as Sheffield Wednesday they try and so if you buy for three years in reals you have to pay over a thousand pounds and then it, it makes it like 20 pound like off a season card so in other words it'd be 390 you'd pay if you but you have to pay for th- it's all honestly we're, the only thing that someone challenged us on and, and, and it's a fair point is that yeah Maybe we've got using the parachute money or whatever, but with us charging lower prices, I mean, suppose the maths and stuff, but are we, we, and we're all desperate for players and signings and stuff. Well, you know where I'm coming from, don't you? But yeah, it is. But then I suppose 18,000 at 250 compared to 10,000. 9, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. And, I, and you'd like to think as well that 18,000, there's then an added benefit in terms of kind of. Um, Atmosphere. I'm not, Atmosphere, I'm not, but I mean, like, kind of like revenue from I'm other not things sure, like I'm sales not sure and how that shirt, works, sales you know, with, uh, with the kiosk and so I don't know if, if town still benefit. I think we, I'm yeah, not sure how yeah, that works. Anymore. Of how much to take over the counter for I'm not sure whether it, uh, whether it just goes into KSDL, but I, I think there's the rental formula as well. I, I don't want to get too deep into this because it's a bit boring, but I think the more more seats we have, the more the rent goes up as well. Yeah. So that's that. So the club are doing it at a cost uh, to them. Um, but some yeah. people can't give him any credit on my house and stuff. £10.83 like, £10. again. Yeah, there were some people, oh, well, what, what else could they do? We've had two crap seasons. Doesn't matter, does it? Like, they, I mean, yeah, they could have put the price up. Past, no, it? not at all. Like, it's just like they've always got to find a, an end job, you know, just to, they can't, I don't know, there's something with Phil Hodgkinson and a lot of people, I don't know what it is. If Dean had done this, I'm like, brilliant, Dean, but just. Phil does it's like an issue. I don't know what it is. It's, it's the man after the man. Yeah. It? It's, it's just, are we getting, are we just expecting 250 pounds every year? Cause I must admit, I thought it'd go up to be honest with you, even though it's been hard. I thought because, it might be 20 quid up or yeah. something. And I'll, I'd have still renewed, but I didn't, I thought it would be the same. <sighs> I think, I think but, it's but, but I'm not, but it's yeah. really good. It is really good. I didn't realize all other stands were same. Cause I, you just look at your own price. For pretty much I, do I think right I'm going to move. Oof. I think I'm going to, I'm going to kind of Big move call. seats. Me and my mate. Yeah. You get a gizmo. Yeah, yeah. Not decided where yet. Valley Parade. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever they call it now. Yeah. Everyone's leaving there, aren't they? Vaughn's gone, aren't they? Oil's gone as well. Yeah, they've both gone, aren't they, today? That's the, it's always the funny thing. It's like, we got beat 5-2 yeah. by Stoke, and it's like, what do I do to cheer this <laughs> yeah. up? Let's have a look at the League 2 table. <laughs> you know what, though? When it, if, if we do meet again, which I don't know if in my well, lifetime at this rate. Cycle, it's cycles, But they'll be it? giving it big, big I am. It's like, where you been for like 20 years or somewhere? It's shocking, man. It, it does make me laugh. I think that the, I remember mm. when they had that German takeover, and they were saying, oh, this guy's worth 200 million. And they genuinely, on their Claret yeah. Amber forum, before they locked it down, said they were going to be the next Man City. And they'll have to rebuild Valley Parade and they'll get 40, 50,000. Honestly, it's an amazing read. It's so oh. football fans, all football fans are deluded. At, we're all deluded at, with Huddersfield Town, obviously, because he maybe not so much, because he, he brings me down a peg or two if I get too too high. <laughs> but, but that is that is crazy. But anyway, screw them. That, I'll tell you what, Saturday, Congo Lord won't yeah. be playing, but he'll be there. The, the away end chance are going to be very, very interesting because there's a lot of lads I know setting off at eight and. Uh, Sponsored in association with Stella Artois and Moravia <laughs> and T- uh, Terence, I hope you've got your beats uh, You'll never plugged pay in, mate, because you're going to need it. Yeah, he's going to get some dogs. Good. Three sides Fulham's ground now, isn't it? Yeah, they're doing yeah, it. Yeah, they've got to side down, aren't they? Yeah, they're building yeah, a building massive up, hotel, they? massive complex and what have you. I hope it's better than the uh, HD1. <laughs> Oh, I hope it's better than <laughs> I hope it's better than the last time I went to Fulham when we lost yeah. five nil in the championship. I, I was so it was such a bad game for us. Every time I, 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 I would just I just ended up watching the rowing in the Thames. It just it was just so <laughs> bad. You could just see the rowing at <laughs> the side of the Thames. I love football because if all of the gone on one and Tuesday, I'd be thinking, oh my god. Now I'm thinking we can win. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? There's two hundred tic- there tickets left. Only town tweeted the other day. I don't know how many we got given, but that's not really bad. That's that. Yeah, the old yeah. Southern Terriers yeah. were there. Yeah, well, they they like, said, everyone loves a London trip, don't they? Yeah, it's a good one yeah, for them as well. It is. Fulham's a great one. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. It's a nice, yeah. nice area, and there's yeah. nice pubs there and yeah. stuff. And it's, the it's forecast is good, and all looking at it, good area, no rain. Because I remember that time when we absolutely. I'm gonna say something naughty there, but when it rained hard and uh, <laughs> we got bad and we had to run across like mud and stuff, oh, it was horrible. Like, Do you remember oh, that? Yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, we lost three that. one and yeah, then it flooded yeah. around the back. Joel Lynn scored and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, flood, uh, yeah. I remember being yeah. there and it flooded around the back and I just, mm. I just stood there thinking, right, it's gonna be an hour to get out of this park or I'm just gonna pile through this water here. And I, I took one <laughs> step in and it would sh- shin high and I thought. I just hope <laughs> that, that we don't go into it like a bit like the Brentford where. Yeah, look where they are in the league, and it'll be a great point down here. So we'll plan accordingly. I'd like to see the attitude that we showed at all. Obviously, they're a the better team, and we know they're going to probably have a go. But I'd love to see us come forward like we were on on Tuesday and 
Smith Rowe and, and you know getting hold of the ball, trying to cause some damage and what have you. You can I'm, get at them as well, can't you, Fulham? That's yeah, the thing. It's like, that they're a bit they, elite goals. If you can get at them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go at them, have a, have a go at them. I mean, I don't. We don't go down there. We're not, expe- we're not expected yeah. to win. Oh. You know what I mean, technically. So I'd rather see us go down there and have a go and try and try and get some at. Then, you know what I mean, go there and capitulate like we've done in previous seasons and got Tonk four or five. You know what I mean? Have a yeah. bit of a have a little bit of a go. God, we, it's, again, it's not... An, have we ever done out there, ever? Oh, God. We're, 90, infamous, we're 93 last time we won there. Oh, I think I saw a town tweet the other day. getting a late goal there once, but I, I can't be down. No, I don't I think it was 93. The, the, the worst time ever when we took about... It must have been about 100... Let's get me leads out on that. When we took about 80,000, that one, when it were... Uh, <laughs> that playoff it. game. Under uh, what it the Bruce, yeah. Well, when we to be fair, I don't know if it would the Bruce. Can you remember it, Josh? Where, where we were at? I think we we're, were we out of the top six and then no, we had to we win or we were in last it. game of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Lee we Clark fixed. scored from, didn't he? We got we absolutely we battered. We were garbage, weren't we? we were yeah, we dropped six, out, yeah. didn't we? Three or four nil. We were just we were so decimated with injuries. I remember they yeah. had to sew Jamie Vincent's ribs together so he could play <laughs> in that game. Honestly, it was, and he was just so yeah. bad. And someone else played centre back who shouldn't have done. And Lee Clark destroyed us, didn't yeah, he? Lee Clark's got a couple, didn't he? And Bianca yeah, Goldberg. Goldberg. Yeah. Chipped, well, chipped it's Vassen. a Gannett manager, then, or Honestly, Va- Vassen, yeah. Vassen goes down as a legendary keeper yeah. for us sometimes. But if you look back at some of the goals he conceded, he conceded some debut, absolute he debut powers. Bury, I remember that. Oh, honestly. My advice, anyone going down there, when you get to the bar, you hand your fiver over, get some more coins out, because you're going to need it. <laughs> It's so expensive Raff. there, isn't it? It's like that <laughs> Neil Warnock meme, isn't it? Yeah. It's going around. <laughs> oh, it's London. Really that, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, look at every time. time. Every time. 20 quid a pint. Love that. That's <laughs> last, last couple of points, really. Um, Sunday was um, a, uh, a historical day for Huddersfield Town Football Club. Um, I couldn't make it there to Huddersfield Town Women versus Ipswich Town. So I sent a roving reporter, Graham Rayner, and we'll, we'll just loop in what he has to say. So, uh, me and my lad went to watch uh, Huddersfield Town women play Ipswich Town in the fourth round of the Women's FA Cup today, and uh, we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. It's the first time we've been to watch women's football live, and uh, the the entire event was lovely. Um, it had a, a slightly sombre mood at the start as we observed a minute's silence in memory of, of young Jordan Sinnott. Um, which was immaculately observed by all, including the 70 or 80 Ipswich fans that had made the long trek up from Suffolk for the day. Um, but the event was great. The football standard was was uh, interesting because it seemed to flip between almost pub-level Sunday league football one minute and then quite technical and, and tactically efficient football the next. Uh, there was real inconsistency there and overall really lacked pace and power. There was only one player with any notable pace on the park. Um, but um, the match was enjoyable. It was there was some real tackles flying around without wanting to sound patronising, and uh, there were some tackles there that probably wouldn't be allowed in a men's game um, at any real professional level at times. And, and the referee seemed to be willing to let them go. Um, and a few a few town players stood out as having kind of really natural footballing ability, especially Kate Mallon, who played sort of wide right, drifted wide left at times, played at number ten as well. Um, who uh, who's been at the club? I think she's played something like nearly five hundred games for the club, and and. Uh, Seems to be a real asset, um, and she's the club captain, and she uh, she did a great job. So uh, we really enjoyed it. The result wasn't fair, um, or wasn't befitting the the statistics, if you like, and the balance of play. Um, I think Ipswich had about six attacks and scored four goals. Town dominated the game, and much like the men's team, struggled to put away any chances they created, really. So, um, but me and my boy really enjoyed it, and I think we'll be back to watch more. So uh, I recommend anyone who's maybe got a gap in the diary because of an international break or something like that, go and watch Town's women play. So Sunday, uh, been and gone, Simon. Uh, Huddersfield, apparently unfortunate to lose 4-1, but it's good, isn't it, to see sort of the recognition for Huddersfield Town women. 1,100 people turned up to watch. That's, that's, a good, that's good, isn't it? That, it must have been a, a buzz for a lot of them playing, you know, for the first, first stadium experience, I think, in, in Huddersfield. Yeah, I think um, from what I know, the kind of Huddersfield Town women's team are doing really well this year, middle of their division, um, obviously fell short at the weekend against what I think is quite a good Ipswich side. From what the very little I know about women's football, the Southern Division is supposed to be much stronger than the perhaps the Northern Divisions through kind of, I guess, investment and, and that sort of thing. Oh, right. But um, it'll be kind of really good kind of to see the Huddersfield Town women's team play at the stadium. Hopefully there'll be many more opportunities for, do, for them to do so in the future and hopefully they'll get stronger and, and kind of really build on uh, that occasion. We've lost to a pub side. We've literally lost to a pub side. <laughs> Absolute danger, this fella. Revving up your engine, listen to a howling roar. That's it, yeah. 
and see that in the crowd a possible David Wagner successor. Send out Patrick Davidson to find out. Max Saggers, Whopper. Adrian Durham, absolute whopper. You can't tell me Eddie Howe won't be keeping tabs on us. <laughs> Hashtag SWFC. Because I've watched you on Match of the Day, and trust me, I think you might as well take up archery at times. Golden parachute cap. Check you right into the danger zone. Piss off how this field. How dare you? How actually dare you? Cosy. We uh, obviously we don't have the the big man here. He's a bit he's too busy this week to to join us. So we're going to muddle through the danger zone without him. So uh, this week, uh, quite sad in sport. Well, very sad in sport that uh, Kobe Bryant died in the the helicopter crash as well, uh, and his daughter. That was really sad news that came up from America. I'm not much of a, a basketball fan, but I do know who Kobe Bryant is. Uh, L.A. Lakers uh, legend uh, over there. Some people need to tweet responsibly. Would you say there's there's some stuff going around at the minute and one Huddersfield there's a tweet here from 2012 which says Kobe's going to end up dying in a helicopter crash which is dread you know a dreadful tweet which should have been pulled to be honest and then a Huddersfield fan because obviously it's happened you know sort of eight years later there's a Huddersfield fan said you know same thing for Phil Hodgkinson ah. whatever he is uh, same thing for Phil Hodgkinson we, we keep say we say this every now and then don't they but come on have some responsibility with what you say Phil Hodgkinson's seen it. You know, how, how does that make somebody feel, do you know, who, who reads that? If it's like, say, you guys, if you guys saw someone put that against you, even the guy who's put it, there's got to be a sort of, I think some fans just let you say, you were saying earlier, Cosy, about the Man United fans, Ed Woodward as well. There's got to be a line somewhere. Like, people need to get their emotions in check, don't they, over football at, at some point. I know it's an emotive sport and people do bubble burst over, but people have got to show some some thought and some, you know, I wouldn't put anything on social media. I wouldn't say to, you know, like you guys, I just, I just, just, it's just, you not just send us a text on you, but no, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean, but the world is just a weird place. I just don't get it. I mean, Twitter's always been a, a sewer really, hasn't it? With, it depends how you use it. But, I, move, I move there because yeah. Facebook had got worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> such a shame, man. We're seeing these, you know, the positive things, the air moonier stuff, you know, good banter, et cetera, the grabber, uh, I'm going to get him well, et cetera, what have you. But then there's that just trouble is we just pre most well, everyone's on here is going to say, yeah, totally agree with you. It's just, uh, it's just so frustrating really. And I, if you were involved with football, be it a chairman or a player, I wouldn't come anywhere near a Twitter account, to be honest with you. And but why shouldn't they have a right to an account as much as me and you? It just, it just seems wrong that they just get the abuse. And, and I don't think it'll change until a time when Twitter and social media companies like them kind of force people to, register with ID and, and that sort of thing and it's kind of one account per person and you've got to commit to mm. kind of putting correct details on etc cetera, etc cetera. I, I only foresee this sort of stuff getting worse and, and you're right for every kind of probably 100,000 almost million people who use social media in the right way kind of for laughing joking about the Ermunia stuff for kind of wishing Grabara well sadly there's one or two people who use it incorrectly and it's Ultimately, there's one or two people who get the limelight. So people don't put the names, they put fake accounts. It's a bit of and a that's minefield, got to stop. Really. And that's yeah. got to stop in my eyes. Sadly, I can't do that. Well, I don't have the power to do that. It's got to be but somewhat mantle, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> poor, isn't it? Absolutely. Poor. So stay out of the danger zone, I guess, you know, and, and especially with the window we've had, you know, tweeting the, about that chairman. It's, it's, the guy can't get a break, can he? He's just, he's, I don't know what he has to do to kind of win over some people. But. And he's obviously... I think we kind of association with the Southern Terriers is going to kind of have a bit of a Q&A before mm. the Fulham game. Kind if of, you're unhappy, if you've got, if you've got go happy, go there and ask him a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. I don't he think he, wants, he won't shirk it. I think a lot of our kind of rage or the rage that's in background is until people see the accounts. I mean, even then, I think if people see our accounts and what have you and the wages and stuff, I, I don't think people will... That's what it's all about to me. It's just <laughs> we, we've been in the Premier League for two years. We had... Blah, blah, 200, 300 million and we spent pittance and we got signing guys from lower division teams and loans. Where's the money gone? Yeah, me out sunk when I said that. And fair play for Phil Hoskinson for tweeting it out because why should he just sit there and take that? 100%, call it out. 
Um, anything else? What, one wish for the last day of the transfer window? I'm going to say right winger. Right winger. Right winger. Goalkeeper as well, maybe for one of you. So yeah, so that's it. I think for episode 55. Thanks guys for coming. Goalkeeper. <laughs> we need one of them, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> goalkeeper. That, that's my wish. Delayed response. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Mr. Coleman. You can still be first choice, mate. Like I say, thank you for listening and uh, thank you to uh, Magic Rock Brewing for sponsoring uh, us again. Uh, Magic Rock uh, Tap, we have both tap rooms in uh, Homeforth and in Birkby. Very much worth going down and uh, and checking out. Me and Josh is on his way now by the looks of it. So uh, thank you again for listening. <laughs> thank you for your sponsorship and uh, we'll come back to you again next week. <laughs>